Pastor Brandon coming to you live from Salem Springs, Arkansas with another Pastor Brandon live broadcast. And it's good to be here today. Good to be here tonight. Um, let's see here. Today, we're going to be getting into some things. Um, actually, we're going to be talking about 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Just kind of go through the chapter and just discuss it and stuff like that. So on, to, on tonight's broadcast, we're going to be going on to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to, I want to share some things with you. <clears throat> and as you know, it is December. And November has gone by. And I kind of wanted to give you an update on the Sermon Audio Ministry. And kind of just have you guys get an idea of, what's hap of what the Lord is doing. And... Um, so yeah, we're going to be doing that. We're going to be sharing that tonight. We're going to be getting into Second Thessalonians, and um, yeah. So we'll, we'll, let's. Uh, we'll, but before we begin all that, let's. Um, I want you guys to keep me in prayer. Um, I've had a really rough couple days, and um, I've had a really. I, I've had a really, really, really rough couple days, and I don't know if it's because of the season that we're getting into, if it's just because the fact. Um, if, if many of you don't know, um, December was when I got, when I made the choice to get born again. Um, I was born, I got born again on December, around Christmas time, around, it was back when I was 17. That would put it back all the way down to 2007. <coughs> and, um, also... And it was, <clears throat> and it was ten years after I got born again that I got baptized by my pastor, and that is when I had joined. Um, that is when I had when I had officially joined my home church. And um, I love my home church. I love my pastor. It's always good to kind of learn. It's good to learn from him and just really be ministered to. Um, with all the ministering that I do every week, it's just nice to go to church on Sunday and just sit and just listen <coughs> to what what my pastor wants to, what, my, what God has put on his heart to preach. And so it's refreshing to get to church. I, I, I really don't, I, I only... I'm only able to get to church on Sundays right now because of my schedule, but I used to have been going twice a week, but I don't know, maybe the Lord has it has it set up for that for a reason. I, I don't know. But anyway, so please keep me in prayer. I've had a really, 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 really rough couple of days. I had a really rough day today. Um my back is hurt my back is hurting me. And um just overall, it's just my back's been hurting me, and I just it just was not a good day. So <clears throat> I want to thank and I want to thank you all for tuning in, and um, those who will be tuning in. So uh, with that, you know, Hank, please uh, please pray for me. Please pray for the ministry. Pray for these videos. Pray for my family. Pray that God will have His way. And, um, and actually with that said, I'm going to just, that's going to be a, an excellent segue of one I want to kind of share first. Um, so at the beginning of the program, I had talked about, uh, sharing some things about the sermon audio min, uh, ministry. And I want to share with you guys of what God's doing. Uh, but I really want to focus on in the U S. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to kind of share some numbers with you. For the month of November, since I've started the sermon audio ministry, and I just want to share some things if that's okay with you, because I want to, I want you guys to see and know what you are all um, supporting when you do, you know, when you do listen to me on sermon audio and stuff like that. So, <clears throat> so here we go. Um, for the month, and, and by the way, I want you guys to keep in mind that these numbers are kind of a rough estimate, so they're not approximate, okay? They are a rough estimate. So the sermon audio statistics, okay, of of the month of November for the, for the Fishers of uh, for the Fishers of Men Ministries, 
um, we had, there was a total of, of MP3 sermon downloads, okay? For the month of no November, <clears throat> um, there was, it looks like according to this, there was a grand total of MP3 sermon downloads to date as 6,494 downloads. That's a lot of downloads. Uh, that's a lot of souls being reached. We don't know who they are. We don't know exactly who that is. But uh, please pray that God would use that to make a difference in these people's lives. <coughs> um, that's MP3 sermons. Now, grand total of videos downloaded to date is 147. Uh, the grand total of download via mobile to date is 2,534 downloads. Um, this month, the listening audience covers 50 states and 49 countries, uh, currently broadcasting 82 sermons from the, from our, from the ministry, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, <clears throat> I won't get into the top sermons, but I want to kind of get into the, 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 the kind of the states, the, ge the geographic locations. Now these... These are just a rough estimate now, so keep this in mind. Um, in California, there was a total of 956, uh, I, I guess, I don't know if you want to say views or downloads. Uh, Virginia, 842. Texas, 324. Ohio, uh, 255. Hang on, i gotta, I got to find my spot because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start losing everything if I don't have something on here. Um <clears throat> Let's see, Illinois, that's my home state, uh, 177, uh, Florida, 174, Maryland, 142, uh, USA, Generals, 135, uh, Arizona, 133, North Carolina, 125, New Jersey, 112, uh, Washington, 112, and by the way, if you're watching this and you're from Arkansas... Our, our, our home state, Arkansas, is 110. Oklahoma is 109. Tennessee is 98. And, you know, the list sort of goes on and on. But there's quite a bit of states mentioned here. Uh, let's see here. Missouri, we're looking at 33 for Missouri and 33 for Louisiana. 16 for Minnesota. Um, so... I don't know exactly the approximation, approximation of those numbers. <clears throat> but the reason why I'm reading those off to you is because I want you to see what kind of difference th these videos could be making. I don't know the difference that these videos are making. I don't know who's being affected by it. I don't know who's listening and whatnot. But... I just wanted to share that with you as kind of an encouragement for you of, um, you know, of the particular numbers for the month of November. <coughs> so, anyways, um, let's see here. Anyways, so that's just kind of some numbers I want to just throw out to you. I, I hope that maybe you're encouraged by that. I, I hope that 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 is something that I don't know. I just I just hope that you're encouraged by that. Amen. That's I'm just gonna leave it as that and call it good. Um, let's see what else. Does anybody have any prayer requests that I is watching? If you have a prayer request, please don't hesitate to mention it. If you want me to mention it, uh, but if you have an unspoken, let me know. But we'll kind of go from there. Uh, let's see. So if you have a prayer request, you go ahead and put it on there and I'm going to kind of get into some other prayer requests. I know I kind of did that for myself, <clears throat> but I do want to kind of open it up and see here. Let's see. I got to pull up my, I got to pull up my prayer request list because I have a list of prayer requests. <clears throat> let's see here. Where is my prayer request list? Here we go. Um, Please pray for a fellow sister in the Lord and her mother and strength for her. Uh, please continue to pray for a fellow brother, for his family and his ex-wife, 
and his family for salvation. Um, pray for a fellow sister. Uh, please keep a fellow sister in prayer uh, as per her neighbor passing away. That's always tough to lose a loved one. And it's really even more tough if you lose a neighbor because if you know your neighbors very well uh, and, and, you're, and you, you befriend them, that's really, that can be really difficult. Um, pray for another sister, for her father, for salvation. Uh, now, Brother Joey doesn't mind me calling him out by name, but Brother Joey, uh, he's got pain. So pray for him. Uh, pray that God will comfort him during his pain. And, you know, pray that, you know, that pain will loosen up. Uh, again, keep me in prayer. Please keep a fellow brother and his family in prayer. Um, <clears throat> we have another sister. We have a, a fellow sister from out of country. I won't say where or who, but please pray for them for salvation for their family. And, um... Yeah, so that's that's about all I have for prayer requests for that. Um, do any of you other have if you all are watching, do you all have prayer requests that you'd like to mention? Uh, if so, just go ahead and type it on there. Uh, type it on the the comments there, and uh, we'll go ahead and begin. Um. Anyways, uh, let's see here. If you have your Bibles with you. Turn with me to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. <coughs> let me get my let me let me get my water here. I gotta get a drink, drink of water. Alright. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I'm gonna start in verse 1, and we're just gonna read through the whole chapter and explain some things. Amen. Um, let's continue. Let's let's start in verse 1. It says, Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, uh, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Okay? Let's stop right there for a second. Okay? <clears throat> in terms... Of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together on him. Now, what is that? That is me that is us being translated and taken out to go and be with the Lord forever. Okay, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Now let me tell you something. Paul writes that not all shall sleep, but but shall be changed by the twinkling of an eye. Okay. Now the first, the dead, in, the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then that which we are alive and remain will be caught up together with Him. Okay, <clears throat> Jesus Christ by our gathering together on Him. That is the translation. Now, who are two people that were translated? Okay, by faith, Enoch was translated. Okay, by faith, Elijah was translated. And you know what's really interesting about Elijah is that Elijah knew when he was going. He knew when he was about to leave. He knew when the day of that of his translation would would occur. Okay, he knew it. Okay, well, let me put it in perspective for you. Noah knew when the flood was coming. He knew. Okay, if he didn't know, uh, he wouldn't have prepared for it. I mean, he would have, but he, but he wouldn't. He just, you know, he, he wouldn't have had the the amount of time that he did to prepare. To, to prepare. So, <clears throat> I believe that um, now. I think uh, I think even uh, Pastor Mike had even mentioned it too. How that that he, uh, his his thinking on it is that we'll know when we'll be translated. And I think he's right. I, 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 I really do think that he might be right on that. Is that. I think that we will know when the time comes, I think we'll know that we'll be translated out of here. And we'll know. Amen. And so, um, anyways, let's continue on, okay? It says that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or tr be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. 
It says that ye be not soon shaken in mind. I think there. Uh, <coughs> I think before we get translated out of here, I think there's going to be a shaking, and the purpose of that shaking is to see who is who, who really is and who really isn't. Amen. And I think part of that 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 that, that shaking is also going to shake the false brethren off, and once they get shaken off, that's when I think. After that, the translation will occur. Okay? So after the shaking, and by the way, listen. Okay? Let's read let's let's read some more of this, okay? That ye be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled. Okay. I think this shaking is probably going to involve involve us being persecuted and probably thrown in prison and thrown in jail because of our faith. And it's going to be a time where it's not going to be pretty, but it's going to be a time where that that dross, even more dross, is going to be taken off, and we're gonna we're gonna to have to go through a certain fire to to be even more so purified before we get taken home. Okay, so that you be not soon shaken in mind or tr be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter, as from us as that day of Christ is at hand. So I'm going to tell you something. The, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is at hand. The question I have for you is, are you prepared for that day? Are you prepared for that day? Okay. <clears throat> and verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. By what means? Let no man deceive you by any means. That means don't let me deceive you by any means. Amen. Don't let anyone deceive you by any means. <clears throat> For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Okay, I gotta talk about this here. Okay, well, okay. So this is this is talking about us being gathered together onto Him. Okay, and we see here is is that day, that day of Christ, won't will not come except. Okay, except there's two things that have to happen. There has to be a great falling away, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. You know who that man of sin is? That's the Antichrist. Now, <clears throat> I don't want you taking my word for it, but I've heard I've heard I've heard well meaning good Bible preachers teach on that we'll be out of here before the Antichrist is revealed. But according to what I see, I don't see that. I see that there has to be a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. Those two things are kind of, they're not, they're two, they're two separate things, but they're linked together as one. So I think that we'll know who the Antichrist is before we leave. Now, does that mean that we'll be tempted to get, you know, the mark of the beast? No, I don't think that would probably be it. But I do think that before we're translated out of here, <clears throat> we're going to see, we'll probably know who the Antichrist is. We just probably won't, we, we won't have any dealings with him though. Does that make sense? Okay, so for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Who poseth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he is as God, sitteth in the temple of God, shewing himself that he is God. Remember, remem, rem, uh, remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things? And now ye know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. 
For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Now, let me tell you something. The mystery of iniquity. Okay? People right now are being indoctrinated into that mystery of iniquity. Okay? How are they being indoctrinated? They're being indoctrinated they're being indoctrinated by by the politicians through socialism through Hollywood through brainwashing through the media they're being indoctrinated through all sorts of ways and methods and that indoctrination is going to set them up for damnation which will which will basically put them in a position where they accept a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. Okay? So right now, people are being indoctrinated to... to um, They're being indoctrinated in this mystery of iniquity. Okay? And, and, and the Bible says it's already at work. And it is. With the Luciferian elitist. <clears throat> Amen. Now, and then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with it with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Okay? Even whom whose coming is after the the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them, that that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Let me tell you something. There are people who are rejecting the love of the truth. Let me ask you guys a question. Do you know somebody, or do you or do you or do you yourself know um, if you reject it, or do you know somebody that does reject it? Because let me tell you something. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. People need to be saved now. Tomorrow might be too late. We don't know. Even after the end of this broadcast, I could be. We could be taken out. We don't know. Okay, only the Lord knoweth. <coughs> now, um. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Let me tell you something. There are these reprobate, brainwashed, t fork tongued devil zombies. I, by the way, when I say zombie, I'm not talking about the ones that you see on TV going around and chomping, chomping on flesh and blood and, 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 and all that. That's not what I mean. Zombie is a what's the word it's a it, it's a metaphor a zombie is a metaphor for a non-believer because just as a zombie just can't resist eating defiled flesh okay and just can't get enough of it a non-believer that's what sin will do to a non-believer and even even a believer too if a believer is not careful okay if a believer is not careful um their flesh will get in the way and they can't get enough of it okay and um but these these so-called these these zombies these these lying two-faced god haters um God hater zombies that are roaming around and by the way by, by the way you, you know what Jesus said okay so th when Jesus when Jesus was calling a man to come follow him he said let me go and bury my let me go bury my uh, I think it was I think it was father let me go bury my father you know what Jesus said he said let the dead bury their dead okay a zombie is what they would call is a living is the living dead. Okay. <clears throat> if you're not saved today 
and you don't have Jesus Christ, you're a living dead person. And sin is so irresist is so is so um, irresistible. I don't know if that's the right word, but it's so sin is so pleasurable to the flesh that your flesh can't get enough of it, and you start getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Does that make sense? Okay, but these reprobate zombies, okay, that don't want to, that reject, deliberately reject the love of the truth, will be handed over to a, will, will be handed over to a strong delusion. And I think part of that strong delusion is going to be the Antichrist. A big part of the strong delusion. Okay? So, and for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure and unrighteousness. Again, we see that a zombie has a, uh, has a craving for corrupt flesh. But a, but a person who is handed over to strong delusion, they have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in sinfulness. They have pleasure in God hating and 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 self and self boasting and puffing themselves up with pride. Okay. Um, but we are bound to give thanks. Always to God for you, brethren, be lo beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Now, let me tell you something. Some Calvinists might might use that verse and twist that into thinking that, yeah, see, that's only a select few. But let me make this point. God says it is not for anyone, it is not God's will for anyone to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you are watching and you are a whosoever, which you are a whosoever, you can call upon the Lord and be saved. Okay? Now listen, I'm not against predestination. I'm only against it to the fact to how... The Calvinists use it, okay? But when you become born again and when you become saved, you are predestined to go home to heaven. There's a predestination there. You are predestined to go home. Why? Not to be saved, because, but because you are saved. And because you are saved, you're predestined to go to heaven, okay? If you don't believe me, take a look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, "It is not; it is the will of the Father that I should I should lose no one, but raise it up again in the last day." What does that mean? Jesus said, "I am the resurrection." Jesus Christ is the resurrection, and He will resurrect you into new life if you put your faith and trust in Him. Amen. That's good news. Okay, let's continue on. Um, <clears throat> Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand, stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Okay, that is not traditions of man. That is biblical tradition. Okay, keep that in mind. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Okay, now the last, here's the last verse of that chapter. And then we'll wrap it up. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every 
Comfort your heart and establish you in every good word and work. Amen. Listen. <clears throat> oh, hang on. I think my cat went somewhere. Oh, there, there's the cat. Um, I didn't mean to get off topic, but here, here's the thing. The day, uh, the the coming of the trans, the translation is coming soon. Okay. My question is: Are you prepared for it? Are you prepared for it? Are you prepared to come with us home? Because if not, today is the day of salvation. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And. If you don't know that heaven will be your home, you can get that settled right now. And how do you do it? It's not complicated, okay? You go before God. Go with, you go before the Lord. And sincerely, with a sincere heart, you, conf you confess your sins. You ask Him to forgive you and to cleanse you. You ask him to fill you with his spirit. And you ask him to come into come and live inside your heart. You ask him to be the Lord and Savior of your of your life, your heart and life. And you put your faith and trust in him. Amen. But the biggest thing to take out of that is you need to confess your sin and ask you not just sin, but your sins. Confess your sins to him with a sincere heart. Amen. Don't parrot words. Don't just say it. Don't just say the sinner's prayer because someone's walking you through it. But sincerely go before the Lord and, and do that and pray. And, and, and sincerely pray before him. And I'm going to tell you something. If, if you do it sincerely and you really want a Savior... You'll be saved. Amen. And I'm going to tell you something. It's not going to be an easy road. It won't be. It's going to be a very difficult road. But I'm going to tell you something. It is worth it. It will be all worth it when you go home. Amen. Anyways, listen. Um, <clears throat> I love you guys. Okay. But I don't want you taking my word for things. Okay. I want you to take with what I say and you match it with this Bible. Okay? If I'm if if what I say does not match with this Bible, then let God be true and every man a liar. And if I'm wrong, I pray and ask that the Lord will rebuke and correct and show me where I'm wrong. And I'm gonna have to tell you, I'll tell you something else too. I will have to give an account for everything I said. Everything I said, whether good or bad, I will have to give an account for. Okay? But if I'm right, if I am right, then I pray that God will show you. Amen? Listen, I hope I hope that you are blessed by that. I, I didn't really have anything in particular to preach on, so I just decided to do Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Um, but listen, I, I love you guys. God bless you. I hope you have a great Tuesday. Now, tomorrow, if uh, the good rest of your Tuesday, I should say, um, if the good Lord willing, I might do a live devotional tomorrow. And and uh, so I'll do a live devotional. Uh, if the good Lord willing, I'll do a live devotional tomorrow. But I will be doing a... Uh, Fishers of Men on Thursday and another Pastor Brandon Live on Friday, if the good Lord willing. Amen. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but with that said, I love you guys. God bless you. You have a great Tuesday. Have a great, have a great, great Wednesday and have a great time in church tomorrow. Amen. Listen, I love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you. We'll see you later. God bless. Bye.